Hey, how you guys doing today? My walk. I'm gonna put you in my pocket because uh, unfortunately today is the day where I gotta take groceries home. So, no visual today, but somehow you'll learn to survive, I'm sure of it. Uh, okay, what's on my mind today? I just want to kind of go over what I think about the current state of Canadian politics. Um, yeah, it's really ridiculous what's happening. Oh, I shouldn't say ridiculous. Because it's kind of normal in a, in a weird sort of way. Normal in that way that, like, we accept war. Uh, war seems to be habitual and throughout the entire history of humanity. To the point where we've just sort of accepted that, oh yeah, that's a normal thing. That's a normal thing that normal people should do. Uh, instead of thinking... What a insane activity that is ridiculous and counterproductive to any organism to fight amongst themselves the way that we do. You know, we're not crabs. We're not lower life forms, right? We have the ability to articulate abstract thought and to reach inside our DNA and reach inside our consciousnesses and make decisions and choose how we want to be. Sorry. So, we, we aren't bound to some sort of odd naturalistic fate. We actually have the ability to shift and change our behavior. That's part of what being a human being is all about. To be able to shift and change your behavior. So, anyway, that was a big, dumb preamble to how I actually think about what's going on. I mean, right now we've got the Conservative Party. I'm glad that they lost this last election. And I mean, when you actually look at it, they lost because they only got the same amount of support as the Liberals. And they didn't get the right amount of support in the right areas. Uh, and that's just, uh, to, to me, that's kind of ridiculous. Here's this group that's dedicated itself to tearing down the, tearing down the social sec security network tearing down the, what we would call the civil society, ultimately. Tearing down everything that makes Canada great. We have a universal healthcare system. We've got uh, a strong sort of socialist bent in this country, but we've given it away over the years because we don't quite understand what's in front of us. And the Conservatives are the absolute true form of this. They work for corporations. They're responsible for starting the corporate coup d'etat that took this nation over. They, like, they are just wholesale uh, courtiers to the wealthy elite. They don't care about the poor. They don't care about uh, anything but money for themselves. They'll evict you from your house. They don't care if you're homeless. They don't care if you live in poverty. Uh, they don't care about any of that. And the irony about the Conservative Party is that they clutch a Bible close to their chest while they do everything they can that runs absolutely opposite to what that Bible says to do. Christ says, give your money to the poor, sell your riches. Well, how many conservatives would actually take that seriously? And in fact, they say quite the opposite. That it's, oh, it's my own abilities and my own force that got me to where I am. Ignoring thousands of years of history and effort. Like, how arrogant is the statement that 
my own effort outweighs the collected effort of not only every other human being, but the force of the universe, the forces of the universe themselves. I mean, it's this incredibly arrogant thing to say that you can't, you shouldn't humble yourselves before the forces of nature and before the forces of humanity. You, you should claim your success as your own personal responsibility because then you can say to the people who the forces of nature have chewed up, well, it was your own responsibility. I mean, these people just need to read the book of Job and realize they're not the, they're not Job in this situation. And these people, of course, are the conservatives. They're, there's an enormous homophobic and bigoted thread that runs through the party incredible racism, denial of history, racism against the First Nations people that just is super deep. Like I have, I have conversations with people who they'll say the most insipid things. Like I'm from Portage Prairie, Manitoba. I'm from a small town uh, community. Population 16,000. For those of you in places like Ontario or British Columbia. That's not even a suburb. That's a that's a borough. And it's like a tiny village as far as you're concerned. In Manitoba it's the third largest city when I was growing up. And people would say things like you you would drive down the street and there would be a uh, First Nations reserve, right? It's where we keep all the First Nations people away from the city, obviously. And uh, one, of the, one of the fellows living on the reserve, he'd hammered a hole through the side of the house that he was living in. This house, of course, is government housing, right? It's provided by the government. And the farmer, the rural farmer or the rural fella who I was with would be like, isn't that despicable? Isn't that disgusting? We paid for that house, right? And he just trashes the house. These, these First Nations people, I say, that's not the phrase that he would use. These First Nations people are just disrespectful. They have no respect for them. How can they have respect for themselves when they don't respect property? Now that makes sense as long as you remain completely ignorant and you have no idea what's going on in the world around you. You don't care about history. You don't care about educating yourself. You don't care about knowledge. Uh, you don't have empathy or compassion. All you care about is money in your own pocket. Uh, and maybe money in your son's pocket. Maybe. Uh, but you certainly don't care about some stranger who is in a different race and in a different culture than yours. And you certainly won't bother even contemplating for a moment the hardship that such an individual has gone through and ask extremely basic questions like, well, why is that person in government housing in the first place? You're certainly not gonna investigate uh, the 60s scoop. You're certainly not gonna investigate the systemic genocide that occurred through Manitoba in the 60s during the 60s scoop where the Catholic Church worked with the RCMP in order to kidnap children from First Nations people uh, in order to indoctrinate them in order to eliminate the culture of the First Nations people uh, in order to turn them into white people essentially. That was the project that, the, that they embarked on in the 60s. So while this rural farmer is growing up in a regular farm environment, a regular home environment, the First Nations man that he's laughing at and, and calling a degenerate is being kidnapped and taken away from his family, uh, thrown into a school, has his head shaved, has his name changed 
is called something completely different. And, the, and this is completely denied. This is completely ignored by conservatives, by conservative voters on this issue. They absolutely will not discuss this. They will not confront it. They do not want to face the truth of this because it gives the lie to their entire position of bigotry and hatred. And the conservative position is just that these people should get their act together. Well, after you've been kidnapped, had your childhood stolen from you, uh, were thrown back into the society, uh, and after many of these people are abused, we know about the sexual abuse that comes through the Catholic Church, we know about all of this. And then you throw this guy back out onto the reserve, and you say, well, here's a house. So you put a guy in the house, you put a guy in a house that's bought by the same people who kidnapped him in the first place. You're goddamn right he's gonna destroy that house. And you know what's gonna happen? He's gonna get another house after that house. You know why? Because that's what you paid for when you kidnapped him in the first place. That guy is gonna get a house from the government every single day, every single time he destroys it, he's gonna get a new house. Because you kidnapped him, you took him from his family, you threw him into a boarding school, you tried to change his identity, you removed something from him that cannot be returned, and you're turning around and you're complaining at me because you gotta give him a house for it? Shut the fuck up. You're a child if you're saying that. You're just a child. If you're telling me that you're moaning and whining because you gotta pay, what, 50 bucks a year in taxes to pay for a guy's house after your government kidnapped him on your behalf, time for you to shut the fuck up and grow up. Simple as that. Stop voting conservative. And so these are the abhorrent idiots and losers that live in the conservative party. These people, and of course, like this denial system, if they can deny that someone was kidnapped and removed from their family, of course they can deny that someone, that uh, climate change is uh, real. Of course they can deny that. Of course they can make that leap. It's such an easy leap to make. If you can deny the truth and the lived history of an individual, of course you can deny uh, a systemic reality as well, especially one that's completely disconnected from what you can observe in your life. I mean, to figure out the plight of the First Nations, you literally just have to read one book. To, to figure out the climate change thing, I mean, you got to trust NASA scientists, you got to trust, uh, you know, the experts in the field, you have to actually believe that science is real, that science is a thing that helps us understand the world around us, you know? And, you know, if you clutch to a book that you think is magical, that you think has answers, which, I mean, I could have a whole discussion on the Bible. I respect the Bible as a literary document. The same way I respect the works of Shakespeare as a literary document. But they're not magical. They're not wizards throwing around magical spells. Um... So this is the Conservative Party. No small wonder that they're having trouble breaking through. Because anyone who doesn't buy into their delusional madness, uh, there's only one rational reason to vote Conservative, and that's because Conservatives will make you slightly richer. You know, they'll cut taxes for rich people. They'll give tax breaks to, to the most affluent people in society, while saying, you know, fuck you to the poor, but who cares about the poor if you're rich, right? Uh, so there's the rational, if you know, sociopathic reason to vote for the Conservative Party, which is terrifying. This terrifies the majority of the country, as it should. So then along come the Liberals, and the Liberals play this game. Their game is actually much more despicable, in my view, because at least the Conservatives are honest about their... Uh, delusional bigotry and madness, right? At least when Andrew Scheer stands up and compares 
uh, gay people to dogs wagging their tails. You know, at least he's staying true to his principles. At least he has principles, even if they're deeply evil and misguided and rooted in a kind of arrogant, uneducated bigotry that all conservative politics is absolutely rooted in. So the liberals, on the other hand, well, they'll pretend like they actually care about these people. You know, they'll pretend like they actually give a crap so that they'll sway you away from the conservatives, who are terrifying. Conservatives are going to make your job, your life worse, without a doubt. That's their stated agenda. They're going to make your life worse. They're going to try to pretend like they're doing you a favor while doing it. Liberals, on the other hand, will say, well, we're not going to make your life worse, but we're not going to make your life any better, right? We'll make a plant legal that should have been, shouldn't have been made illegal in the first place. Oh no, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to pardon anybody. Certainly not easily. We're not going to offer a, a carte blanche to just cross the board. Uh, pardon, that's not going to happen. And every day you're going to wake up and what are you going to do? You're going to go work for capitalists. That's what you're going to do. Because liberals work for the same people that conservatives work for. They just lie about it. They just pretend like it's something other than what it, what it is. It's like when Justin Trudeau goes to a climate change rally and stands in a climate change rally. He's like, yeah, we're the change, we're the future, climate change rally. Meanwhile, he's the leader of the majority government. If he wanted to put forward a strong climate change policy, he could. He absolutely could. But he doesn't. And he doesn't because of the simple reason. He works for the same people the conservatives work for. And this is the bad cop, good cop game that the conservatives play with the liberals. Because they're on the same team. The team is keep the populace working for capitalists. That's the goal, that's the objective. Keep the populace working for capitalists. And if the populace gets disfranchised with the liberals, then a conservative comes in and makes things way better for corporations and makes things way better for, for, for rich people. And then once the populace gets sick of them, well, they turn to the liberal class, which works for corporations and keeps people working for capitalists. Uh, but they're not gonna gouge you, right? Liberals will give you like a 5% increase in your living standard. Conservatives will take you down 10%. And this goes back and forth. Now what's sad about it is that people just keep going for it. They just keep drinking it up. What needs to happen is just a full-scale abandonment of both these, uh, both, these, uh, both these places. Both these... But it's not going to happen. Because people are scared. And they're right to be scared. Anyway, on that gloomy note, I'm home. Love y'all. Hope you're having a good time.